YouTube friends. I'm Heidi Viegas with Healing Harvest Homestead and the School of Botanical Arts and Sciences. I'm an herbalist, I'm an aromatherapist, um, and I've been practicing for quite a while. And I see clients, I do videos, and I teach courses. I actually teach people how to create their own customized home apothecaries for their families. And uh, that even includes your pets. <laughs> so Anyway, I just wanted to hop on here uh, real fast and talk about some essential oils that I just love for daily use. So these are the 11 best, uh, you know, great essential oils that you can have in your home and use them every single day. They're just wonderful. So let's go ahead and get started. There's 11 of them and I'm going to kind of speed through them so this doesn't get super long. If you have questions, please put them in the comments. I love to answer for you. and. Um, yeah, let's go. All right. So number one is lemon. Lemon essential oil is amazing. Uh, this is citrus limon is the Latin name of it. And it's wonderful for both cleaning, diffusing, and even you can use it topically, even though it's got some phototoxicity if you use it in low dilution. So you'll have to look that up. I do have, um, let's see here, my essential oil ultimate <laughs> the ultimate essential oil reference guide uh, that I have available for sale. It's excellent. It's a really good resource, but it helps you with those uh, dilution properties and things like that. So lemon is very high in a chemical called D-limonene. D-limonene has been clinically shown to get into your uh, system and boost your white T cells and get your immune system going. So it's really excellent for diffusing. It's actually one of the ingredients in the old traditional thieves blend that we all talk about in the herbal world. It's an excellent, excellent blend for keeping you well and healthy. It's uplifting. So the citrus essential oils all have limonene to one extent or another. And it is just a very uplifting chemical. So it's really wonderful for boosting the mood ah, and just making you feel really, really good. And it just smells clean and fresh. So lemon is excellent. It's really wonderful for cleaning too. The next one up is lavender. So lavender essential oil, lavandula angustifolia. Ah, <laughs> contains two wonderful chemicals. One is linalool and one is uh, linalool acetate. These are both calming and they're soothing. But besides all that, lavender is just one of those oils that is has so many uses, broad, broad ranges of uses. It's excellent for the skin. It's excellent for wounds and burns. I really love it for even as a supportive essential oil for respiratory conditions. It's definitely a relaxant. We've all heard, you know, if you have somebody's cranky or upset, just diffuse some lem or lavender and it will really help. And it does. In fact, one study of uh, women in labor where they diffused lavender in the delivery room, help the women calm down and just stay relaxed so that they could birth the babies more easily. So that, and that's an actual clinical study. It's just great for general first aid. In fact, the man who discovered lavender essential oil, um, the reason he found out why it worked so well was because he was working in his lab. He was a scientist and he experienced a burn, a really bad burn. And he just kind of dumped lavender all, lavender all over it. And it was better really fast. Like, like and he was amazed. So he started studying essential oils. His name was, um, oh, his last name was Gatwasse, I believe from France. Uh, and that's why actually essential oil use originated with the French. And it's just amazing. Anyway, that's, <laughs> this is, we're not going to go into the, all that here. So this is peppermint essential oil. Peppermint is mentha ex piperita. Whenever you see the X in a Latin name, it means that it is a hybrid and peppermint is a hybrid of between spearmint and I believe horse mint. But anyway, it's high, high, high in menthol. So peppermint's wonderful to have in your home. First of all, it really smells great. It is a wonderful caffeine substitute, <laughs> not to be taken internally, but uh, it's really wonderful uh, if you're driving. You know what? Take a few deep breaths of peppermint essential oil and it will perk you right up. I'm 
telling you, this is what I do. I keep it in my car all the time and especially for long road trips. Peppermint is also wonderful for pain relief. So it's one of my favorite essential oils to use for pain relief. Also because of the menthol content, it's cooling, generally speaking. But if you use it neat, it's quote unquote hot. So it can burn. You want to dilute it. You want to be sure that you're diluting your peppermint essential oil. There are some contraindications with using it around children. So please be sure. Here you go again. <laughs> um, my ultimate essential oil reference guide is really helpful. Uh, or join us in the Confident Herbalist Tribe. Uh, lots of, lots of information in there. Anyway, it's wonderful for joints, sore muscles, uh, headaches. It's wonderful for headaches, even migraine headaches. It can be really helpful with. And it's another uh, essential oil that's really helpful for the respiratory system. So that Thieves Blend I told you about, mm, a lot of people add peppermint to that as well. So I love peppermint. It's really good to have around your house for a number of different reasons. All righty. Next up is we're going to talk about tea tree. So tea tree is Melaleuca alternifolia. And you've probably uh, heard of tea tree essential oil before being super helpful for a number of reasons. So it is great for cleaning. Uh, you add some tea tree and some lemon together in a vinegar and water solution. You've got a really excellent cleaner that's broad based with the antimicrobials and antiseptic uh, properties and things like that. Tea tree is also antifungal. So it helps to get rid of fungal infections like ringworm, athlete's foot, toenail fungus. It's amazing for toenail fungus. Just wonderful. It wards off lice. <laughs> so you can see tea tree is, is one of those little powerhouses that you don't need a lot of it. And, uh, but if you get a condition or whatever, tea tree is really handy. They have around, if you have children and they've come home with lice in their hair, uh, diluting a little tea tree essential oil and just kind of rubbing it on the nape of the neck can help. There are actually shampoos you can purchase that have tea tree essential oil in them. It's a wonderful lice preventive. They don't, those little lice don't like tea tree <laughs> very much. It's really helpful with just general skin issues too. It's a wonderful, wonderful essential oil. All righty. Next up, we've got frankincense. Frankincense, which is, there's several species of Boswellia. Boswellia is the genus. Oh, this oil is amazing and everybody needs it. It's a little bit pricey. And by the way, you really need to look into the sustainability of how your frankincense is sourced. Unfortunately, it's in such high demand right now for all of its wonderful qualities that the trees are in many areas becoming endangered or extinct. So uh, there are some farms that are starting up, farming the trees and cultivating them on purpose is something that is happening. So just be sure that you're buying your essential oils from a good company. I do have a video about how to choose a good essential oil company, and I'll try to remember to link that to that. And if you want to see it, and I forget to link to it, just uh, in the comments, remind me, okay? Uh, okay, so frankincense. Number one, it is amazing for the skin. Amazing. It is anti-aging. This is an essential oil that I will often add to you know, like my creams for my face because it's just so beautiful. It's so, so helpful. It is really helpful for wounds. It's great first aid essential oil as well. Wonderful as an anti-inflammatory. Many people will actually take the resin internally for inflammation, but the essential oil topically is also really helpful. I just love it. It's, it really does help with pain and, and inflammation, brain health and cognition, frankincense. It doesn't perk you up like peppermint does. And it doesn't necessarily relax your brain like lavender does, but frankincense goes to work on your nervous system and it helps you with cognition and focus and if you uh, want to go into a meditative state or if you're praying, frankincense is just wonderful to diffuse. It really helps you just to get that peace and focus and, and concentrate all at the same time without being super energizing. It's just not an energizing oil. It's just lovely. It is also helpful for the respiratory system. So um, a lot of the resins are actually, they're very helpful for general respiratory health. All right, next up, we've got Orange. Orange is uh, citrus sinensis. <laughs> and I just love this. I got to take a whiff of it too. 
<sighs> and feel the brightness. <laughs> um, but orange is wonderful. It is a, an amazing base for many blends because it works really well with a number of essential oils. So orange is just really handy to have around just for that. Uh, you can diffuse it with lemon. It works well with lavender. It works well with peppermint. It works well really with everything I've shared with you so far. It is also high in the limonene. So it also is immune boosting just as lemon is. It's not quite as powerful as lemon essential oil in that regard, but it is still really helpful. Orange can also help with focus and it promotes positive feelings. If you're in a bad mood or if you're, if you've just had a rough day, take a whiff of orange. And I just want to say right now, what I have diffusing in my diffuser is a combination of frankincense and orange. And I'm just going to share with you, uh, use twice as much orange as you do frankincense, or maybe three times as much orange as, as your frankincense. And you are going to have the best smelling, most beautiful, uplifting, peaceful home <laughs> right there. All right. The next two essential oils, uh, I'm actually treating these as one, even though they're not the same thing, they're very different, but I love them for many of the same reasons. They do have different properties and I'm not going to get into the differences. I'm just going to talk about the, the similarities here, but, uh, rosemary and sage essential oils. These are both beautiful and I love them both. First of all, they both are really helpful for your brain health and cognition and memory and focus. So when I'm working and I need to concentrate, and this is what these would be really great, like if you have a high school student studying for a hard test or something, but I love to diffuse sage, rosemary, and lemon together because you've got the uplifting properties of the lemon and you've got the massively brain focused properties of the rosemary and the, the sage. So that's number one. It does support overall brain function. Both of them do. Uh, these oils are also antimicrobial. So they're really helpful for supporting immune health and wellness and helping you to get over a cold or a flu much faster. So they do boost the immune system to an extent and they speed healing from cold and flu. Also, you will find rosemary and once in a while sage as ingredients in that traditional thieves blend too. And I'll talk more about the thieves blend when I, when I wrap this up, if I have a moment, but sage is salvia officinalis and rosemary is rosmarinus officinalis. And I love them both. All right. Next up, we're going to talk about, let me scoop my, I've got a little pile of my special oils here. <laughs> All right, next up, we're going to go ahead and talk about rose. Oh, rose. Mm, this is so beautiful. So this is Rosa X Damascena, uh, also a hybrid. And uh, this happens to be Rose Auto, and I, I just love Rose. Rose is one of the expensive oils. Unfortunately, this is what we call in the aromatherapy world a precious oil. Uh, many of the florals are, like uh, jasmine, neroli also is uh, a very expensive helichrysum. Luckily, you don't need a lot of these, so you don't need a lot of drops of rose. In fact, too much rose is going to give you a headache. Just know that you don't have to use a lot of it. Uh, so that's a down side of it. So it's probably not great for every single household, but if you can afford it, it's wonderful. So first of all, it is anti-aging as well. If you were to combine rose and frankincense uh, together, number one, you're going to have a lovely smelling blend. Um, maybe put a little orange in there too, but add that to your skincare, add it to your body lotion, unscented of course, and um, experience the skin benefits of that. Uh, it's really great. My favorite thing about rose is it's so good for and helpful for emotional health and wellness. So all of us are, most of us anyway, are under a great deal of stress right now in the world. And, you know, things, things are kind of hard, you know, and rose is one of those essential oils that you can uh, use to open the heart oops, help you take care of any angry feelings or sadness or grief. Rose is just really helpful for that. Take another smell of it. <laughs> I love this oil. All righty. Next up, I've got two here also. So your evergreens. 
And these are, would be your pines, your spruces, your firs. So pines would be anything in the genus Pinus. Or, and then your firs are the species Abies. And then your spruces are your species, or your genus, I'm sorry. These are the genuses because there are a lot of species of all these trees. A lot of different kinds of different pines, firs, and spruces. But Picea is uh, your spruce. These are all really, really great. They all contain levels of um, a chemical called pinene, of course. <laughs> this is a chemical that is so helpful for the respiratory system. It's uh, it's just beautiful. Plus, they're gentle. So mm, many of the respiratory supporting herbs contain a chemical called 1-8-cineol, and I don't even have many of those here. Rosemary might have a little bit of 1-8-cineol depending on the chemotype, which we'll talk about in a moment. Pines don't. Your, your pines, firs, and spruces are just so beautifully gentle for your respiratory system. Very, very safe to diffuse. Very, very safe to um, inhale. I will say this, for some people with asthma or certain breathing conditions, before you use essential oils, before you start inhaling them, you need to do a little test sniff uh, down below your nose a little bit farther and uh, maybe five inches down, take a breath. If you feel any tightness at all, then that's a sign you shouldn't use that oil. You want to do that with your pines and your evergreens though. And I want to say here that the pines and the spruces and the firs are lovely in diffuser blends and really men love these too and so do women <laughs> next up is thyme now i'm going to talk this is where we're going to talk a little bit about the chemotypes okay thymus vulgaris is the latin name now these plants have lots of chemicals inside of them. And when the essential oil distillers and companies do the GCMS reports, they test for the chemical compounds in that batch of essential oils. Sometimes you're going to have thymus vulgaris that's maybe grown in Italy or wherever, um, Cyprus or wherever they grow it, or here in America. And it might be high, the chemotype thymol. Thymol it stinks. <laughs> I'm just going to say it like that. I don't like that smell, but it is excellent if you are getting sick or something like that. But this time here is the chemotype linalol. You already heard me talk about linalol when we spoke about lavender, right? Linalol is very relaxing, number one, and it smells really amazing. It's one of those chemicals that gets it, that's in some essential oils that just smells so good. So this time, thymus vulgaris, chemotype linalol is so helpful in so many ways, but it, it's relaxing and it smells good. So I love using it in blends for that reason. It's immune boosting. It's very gentle. It's, you know, it's great for kids. It smells amazing and it's calming. And that's because again, of the, the chemical linalol that it's high in. All right. Finally, finally, we've got copaiba, balsam copaiba. And this is Copaiba officinalis is the Latin name. It's a, a resin and it's a very, very gentle and safe. This is another one that, that, you know, you can use this with your pets, even on cats, dogs. They, it's, it's a very, very wonderful, gentle, safe essential oil with some wonderful pain relieving qualities. Very, very helpful. The reason why it's so great for pain relief is because it contains a chemical called B caryophyllene. And and that is actually what is contained in CBD and what is uh, one of the most active ingredients in it. So it goes to work and it really helps with muscles and joints, as well as it being very, very calming. So I love this essential oil. I feel like it's it's one that should be in all households too, especially if you've got youngsters or, or, or pets, things like that. It's got a very gentle smell to it. All right. So that wraps it up. We went over lemon, lavender, peppermint. We went over tea tree, frankincense, and orange. We went over sage and rosemary together, rose and and then the evergreens together, thyme, chemotype linalol, and copaiba. So 
If you have any questions about any of these essential oils or ways to use them, then please ask in the comments. And uh, you know, you be sure to get my herbal remedy guide and cheat sheet if you would like to take advantage of that. I also have a free five-day herbal foundations course. I do speak about herbs and essential oils in this course. And I do teach from a Christian perspective, by the way. Okay, so I'm Heidi Villegas. I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you'll consider adding some of these to your apothecary. All right. Bye-bye. Have a really awesome evening.